we're going to work on the strippy water bottle sling. It's the perfect little thing to hold your water bottle. We're gonna learn how to put the strap in. We're even gonna put in the bottom, which is a circle. Lots of new techniques and I can't wait to get started. So let's go ahead and start by going over what's in our kit. So in your kit, you're gonna find three different fabrics. Two of them are gonna be nine by 11, which we call fat sixteenths. And then you're gonna have a polka dot one that's nine by 22, and we call that a fat eighth, okay? Then you're also gonna have a piece of fusible fleece. You're gonna have some rope for your uh, sling. And then in your pattern, there's a circle template. And this is what we're going to use to cut out our circle for the bottom of our water bottle sling, okay? So let's first start out by cutting our feasible fleece. So let's put these to this side. And what it wants us to do is we need to cut an eight and a half by 11 inch piece, okay? So this is eight and a half or yours might be nine, you might need to trim it down a little bit. We'll, we'll do that next. But I'm gonna focus on cutting an 11 inch piece right now. So here's my 11 inch mark. I've got my ruler, lining it up along this line. I'm using my mat to help me align it. And then I'm gonna take my rotary cutter and trim that away. Now I'm going to turn this and I need to uh, trim it down to eight and a half. So this is always a good practice whenever you get a piece of fabric. Sometimes it might not be exactly um, like nine inches or um, 12 inches or whatever number. You always wanna have a bigger piece that you buy and then you're going to trim it down so then you have the exact measurement that you need, okay? So I'm just trimming off the littlest bit and it'll make a big difference in the end. I know it seems like a little bit right now, but if I were to leave that on, it would just be a lot bigger than the rest of my project. So it's always good to square up or trim your fabrics beforehand, okay? So eight and a half by 11, I'll set that aside. Now we're gonna take our remaining piece and we're gonna cut out one circle of the fusible fleece. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and take a pin and I'm going to pin my template to the fusible fleece and then I'm going to follow the outline and cut out a circle. Okay. We'll take that pin out. We're gonna use this again, so we'll just put that aside. And there we go. Now, we're going to take our lining piece, which is the fat eighth, and we're going to cut an eight and a half by 11 inch piece. Okay, so I'm gonna cut the 11 right now. So 11 inches, trim, okay. Once again, we need to trim this down to eight and a half. So here's eight and a half and trim. Make sure you put your blade, your blade in the locked position, okay? We're gonna set that aside. Now, what it wants us to do is we're gonna cut two circles out of this lining fabric, okay? So once again, I'm going to pin my template on, take my scissors and cut around the outside edge. Okay, there's our one circle. We'll go ahead and pin on a second one. Okay, and there's our second circle. Okay, so we're done with that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to cut our strips. So from our first 
one. We need to cut it at two and a half by 11, okay? So I'm gonna make sure that this is 11 inches this way, and then I'm gonna cut two two and a half inch strips, okay? So we'll go to the two and a half inch mark. And then we're gonna add two and a half plus two and a half, which is five. This is, you never thought you'd be doing more math, right? But this is quilt math. This just helps you be more efficient when you're cutting, okay? So there's two and a half by 11, all right? So this is just extra, we'll put to the side. And we're gonna do the same thing for the blue fabric. Okay, so once again, the 11 inch, the, the 11 inches of the fat 16th is gonna go, the 11 will be right here. And we're gonna cut two, two and a half inch strips. And then I'm gonna do it on the five inch mark because two and a half and two and a half is five. You're welcome to move this back over to zero if you want and cut another two and a half inch right here. But I think, I think you guys can handle it. <laughs> okay, now this is just extra that we'll put to the side. All right, so that is all that we need to cut for right now. So let's go ahead and get started with the sewing. The first thing I want you to do is take your two and a half inch by 11 inch pieces and I want you to alternate the fabrics, okay? So I'm gonna do a stripe and then a solid, another stripe and a solid. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna sew these together into what we call a row, a row of strips or blocks. You're gonna hear that frequently when you're sewing. So we're gonna sew this into a row by placing right sides together and there really isn't a right or wrong side to the solid blue fabric, but just make sure that the stripe, the pretty side or the right side is um, facing the blue fabric, okay? So go ahead and take a couple pins and pin the pieces together. And it's okay if the fabric goes a little bit beyond the edge right here. You can see I can, I have a little bit extra blue. That's okay because we're gonna trim this down after we have sewn the strips together, okay? So let's go to our machine. And we're gonna sew a quarter inch all the way down that one side. Okay. Trim our threads, and we're gonna to go to our ironing station now and press this seam open, okay? So a tip I have for you when it comes to pressing is I like to what we call set the seam, okay? I like to do this because it kind of softens up the seam a little bit. And then I'm going to flip this open. Okay, and now I'm gonna take my iron and press. Now we're not iron, ironing a shirt. You're not gonna be rough with it, okay? I want you just to gently glide the iron over your project along that seam and it's gonna give it a nice crisp edge, okay? Might be a little hot, <laughs> okay, but just cool it off and there you go. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and add the third and fourth strip onto our, our row. Okay, so let's go to our workstation. Again, we're going to place the stripe fabric right sides together with that blue fabric. And we're going to pin, okay? Again, it's okay if the fabric goes a little bit beyond the edge because we are trimming it down. Okay, so let's go to our sewing machine and sew that quarter inch. Okay. 
Let's go to our ironing station and press the seam. So we're gonna set the seam and then fold it open and press again. Okay. All right, so let's add on our last row. We're gonna go to our workstation and we're gonna place our last piece right sides together. And pin. All right, let's go sew that together. Okay, let's press the seam open. We're gonna set the seam. And then fold it open. And press again. Okay, so let's go back over to our workstation and remember how I said we're going to trim this down? Well, that's this is the next step we're gonna do. So we need to trim this down to 11 inches this way. So I am going to just barely, barely trimming, okay? We're gonna trim that off. So now what we're going to do is we're gonna take our piece of the fusible fleece and we are going to iron the fusible fleece to the back of the pieced block that we just did, the pieced row. So it is gonna be a little bit larger, that's okay. And what we're going to do, remember from the last box, we talked about fusible fleece where it has the bumpy kind of rough side and then the soft side. The rough side is the glue part, okay? So we wanna make sure that is touching the back of the pieced block. We're gonna to go to our iron. And we're going to press this. And be careful not to get your iron on the fusible fleece where the glue is because you might get some glue on it. So just gently cover it, okay? Okay, once that is ironed on, that, that will stick and adhere to the back of the piece block. Now, at this time, what we're going to do is we're going to fold the top edge. So I'm gonna call this my top edge. And I'm going to fold it down about half an inch, okay? So I can come to my mat here. And this is about half an inch on the 11 inch side. Okay, so I folded it down about half an inch. And I'm gonna go to my ironing station and I'm going to press that, okay? Okay, you can finger press it in place just to hold it. And then you're gonna iron. Give it a nice firm press. Okay. All right, so while we let that cool, we're gonna go ahead and take our lining piece. Okay. And we're gonna do that exact same thing. We're gonna fold it down, or I should say up, about half an inch. Okay, just gonna finger press that. all the way down. Okay, we're gonna take it to our ironing station and I'm gonna press that fold. So again, we folded it 
about half an inch on the 11 inch side, okay? All right, so let's set those aside for right now. What I want you to do is next grab one of your circles and your fusible fleece, and we're going to fuse this together. Okay, so there's that bumpy side. I'm gonna make sure that's on the back or touching the back of my fabric. And let's go to our ironing station and press. Okay. Might be really hot. <laughs> All right, so we've got that there. Okay, now we are going to form the, the, the round shape, okay? And how we do that is let's first take our pieced row, okay? We're gonna place this right sides together, so I want you to fold it in half right sides together, okay? Just fold it in half, right sides together. And I want you to take a couple pins, and I want you to pin the one side together, okay? So what we're going to do is we're gonna sew a quarter inch on that one side, okay? So let's go to our machine. We're gonna sew a quarter of an inch all the way down. We're making a tube, okay? Okay. is I want you to take your circle piece that has the fusible fleece on the back, and I want you to place this right inside here. And I'm gonna show you the easiest way to do that. So I want you to fold this in half and just kind of give it a finger press, okay? Then we're going to line up that edge or that fold with the seam that we just sewed, okay? And I'm going to place a pin. I want you to feel free to pause this video, take it very slowly, and carefully pin, okay? Now what I want you to do, instead of going around in a circle, I want you to go to the opposite side where you folded, where that fold is, and place it on the edge, on the opposite edge. Now that we've done that, you can go around and fill in the gaps, okay? This is just gonna make sure that it's evenly spaced, okay? Okay, I know it looks a little weird right now, but just trust the process, okay? So once you've pinned all the way around, you can kind of see in there, I don't know if you can, <laughs> but you'll see the polka dot fabric at the bottom. That's what we want. So we're gonna pin all the way around the circle. And what I want you to do is we're gonna go to our sewing machine and sew a quarter inch around the entire circle. So you can flatten this out as you go to your machine and just take it slow. This is not a race. I want you to learn this technique um, and to just practice, okay? So let's go to our machine. And you can flatten this out a bit. And you're just gonna sew a quarter of an inch. Take it slow, because you have lots of pins in here. And you're gonna stop every couple stitches to take that pin out, okay? We're gonna just slow, slow, slow. Okay, and you can turn your project over. Okay. 
All right. You did it. We did it. Okay. So we sewed the two pieces together all the way around the circle. And what we're going to do now is we're going to turn this right side out. Okay. Oh my goodness. And there we go. We did it. We added the circle at the bottom. Okay. Okay, so now we're going to do those same steps like we did before for the lining. So we're going to go ahead and place right sides together. And we're going to pin along the edge. Okay, so let's go to our sewing machine and sew a quarter inch on this side. Okay. We'll cut that. And now we're gonna do that same step with the circle. We're gonna fold it in half, kind of crease it with our fingers so we know where the center points are. Now you're gonna take the tube and we're gonna line up that fold that we just made with that seam, okay? And again, we're just gonna pin this in place, okay? Put it in. And now you're gonna go to the opposite side following that crease that you made and pin. Now you can fill in the sides. Okay, and we do this so it has um, even, there's an even amount of fabric on either side so it distributes the fabric nicely. Okay, we're gonna do that same thing of sewing a quarter inch all the way around and then we'll add the two pieces together. So take it nice and slow. Okay. All right. So we're actually not going to turn this right side out at this time because this is the lining. We want to see the pretty side on the inside of our water bottle holder, okay? So now we're gonna bring the two pieces together, okay? And how we do that is we're gonna take our lining piece and we're going to stuff it in the middle of our outside piece. And now we're going to combine the two pieces together. So remember how we folded it down at the beginning, about half an inch? We're gonna line up those edges now, and now you don't see any raw edges, okay? So we're gonna take some pins, okay? And we're going to pin the two pieces together, okay? Okay, now before we go to our sewing machine, we need to attach our rope, okay? So what you're going to do is you are going to place the edge, the end of your rope, and you might need to unpin one section, and you're gonna place it in between the lining and the outside piece. So you're just going to sandwich it in there, and then pin it again in place, okay? All right, now we need to do that for the opposite side. So I'm gonna bring my strap around to the opposite side, okay? I'm going to unpin this 
section right here. Slip the end of the rope in between the lining and the outside piece. About an inch down and pin. Woof, we are almost done. There's lots of pinning, but don't be intimidated. I promise this will all be worth it. <laughs> so now what we're going to do, we are going to top stitch all the way around to close the two pieces together and attach the strap, okay? So let's go to our sewing machine. And again, I want you to take it very, very slowly, okay? And the best way I have found to do this is to follow or have the inside be facing up, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead, put my presser foot down, and I'm putting my needle just right along the edge of my fabric, just barely maybe an eighth of an inch in. And I'm going to top stitch this. Again, take it very slowly because you have pins in there, okay? And when you get to your strap, if you want to do a back stitch to hold it in place, now would be a good time. And then we'll go forward. And again, back stitch over the rope. And you can back stitch at the end of your seam as well. Okay, we'll cut our threads. And there you have it. You have your water bottle, your strippy water bottle sling all done. So you can put your water bottle in there. You could even put, I don't know, all sorts of things in here and you can carry it around with you. So I know this was a big project, but we wanted to challenge you to um, work around curved seams, attaching multiple pieces in order to have it lining. I mean, you are going to love making this and there are lots of new techniques that you're going to learn. So I'm so happy you could join me for the strippy water bottle sling and I can't wait to see what you come up with. 